September 1967 marked a historic turning point in the history of the Denver Jewish community. Few could have envisioned the level of impact that a yeshiva high school and site for advanced Talmudic study could hold for the future. As communities across America struggled with the challenges of assimilation, apathy, and indifference, a group of committed Denver lay leaders launched a bold vision to resolve the need for higher Jewish education. They recognized that this was the key to Jewish continuity. Yeah, I was secretary, so I took notes of the meetings. I remember some of the people, Sheldon Barron and Mr. Zussman and uh, Manny Feder and some of the people like that. I felt that it would improve the community by helping, uh, by providing for the children a, uh, you know, an education after Hillel. Mr. Sheldon K. Barron spearheaded that initiative to create a citadel of committed Torah Judaism. I really think in general, uh, he saw, uh, he felt that Denver was capable of doing things that were done in cities with larger Jewish populations. And, that, and I think that's as, such as, examples of that would be sustaining a Yeshiva high school, such as the Yeshiva Torah Chaim here. My father, even though he uh, had not been established in business in Colorado, was willing to sacrifice or take the uh, necessary risk to move to Denver in order to advance that the, Jew, the Jewish opportunity should become first and everything else would come second. That this 50th anniversary of the founding of Yeshiva Torah Chaim is profoundly personal to me in that this 50th anniversary of the Yeshiva Torah Chaim's founding coincides exactly with the 50th yard site of my mother, Elia Shalom, Morris Fagel Bas Naftali Herz, Elia Shalom. It was, just, it was in this time, in this time frame, in these months, these last months of my, father, my mother, Elia Shalom's life, that my father, Zichon Livocha, and my mother, Elia Shalom, were planning to found the Yeshiva Torah Chaim of Denver, to bring Yeshiva Gedolah to the, to the city of Denver. Rabbi Isaac Wasserman, a disciple of Rabbi Aaron Kotler of Blessed Memory from Beth Madresh Gavoha was teaching in Boston when he was asked to head the proposed yeshiva in Denver. At, at the time, 50 years ago, I was a Rebbe in Boston giving a shear every day, learning morning, afternoon, and night. It was all day in the yeshiva, and at night I was preparing shear at home, and I was very, very thankful and very happy at the time for having such an opportunity to spend my time learning and teaching. And I got this call to open a yeshiva in Denver, to which I laughed. You got the wrong guy. I'm not the one to be able to open a yeshiva. So this gentleman in the name of Dove Lesser was an activist in the Lakewood Yeshiva, said to me, um, you don't have to go if you don't want to go, but you do have to come to this meeting that I set up for you and Mr. Sheldon Barron from Denver. So I went to the meeting, and we spent some time together, and uh, what can I tell you, the rest is history. Here I am now, 50 years later. Rabbi Wasserman's trademark smile warmth and welcoming personality naturally endeared him not only to the students and his colleagues but to the wider Denver community where he made many loyal friends for Yeshiva Toraschaim. Rabbi Wasserman understood that he couldn't embark on this huge venture on his own. He was introduced to a fellow Talmud, Rabbi Chaim Kahan Shlita, at a meeting in Boston. Together with their supportive families, they moved to Denver to begin the enormous task of launching the yeshiva. When our Bayesheim will return us to Tzion, Hayina, we will become kechalmim, like our dreams. Our dreams and our hopes and aspirations will be finally realized. I feel a little bit tonight that type of emotion. When I come in and I see the yeshivas, and some of the Talmudim 
that were my Talmudim, and we're all here together, and I see what the yeshiva, I knew clearly, being a, a shutif with Rabbi Yitzchak originally, what his dreams and hopes and aspirations are, and now to see it and to feel that realization of those dreams is a very, very exciting thing. We made friends and we asked people to be part of the board, part of the people who come to the dinner. And it, it actually turned out that these people all lent their support. And uh, I can say now, 50 years later, obviously it's been working because it's 50 years now that we've been doing it and we're still there. Rabbi Wasserman and Rabbi Kahan soon realized that a third person was needed as a full-time member of the yeshiva staff. They flew to Lakewood and returned with Rabbi Israel Kagan, a longtime friend of Rabbi Wasserman and a highly respected Torah scholar and caring individual. Many thoughts come to me this year, it's 50th year. Chazal, I was saying, it's called 50 years Oilam. It's called a new world because there are changes incrementally every year. And the 50 years it accumulates and everything is so totally different from what it was 50 years ago. Baruch Hashem, we've lasted the 50 years. And the next 50 years, which is a new world, as we were able to deal successfully, Baruch Hashem, most of the time for the past 50 years. I was apprehensive in coming, coming directly from Lakewood to Denver. But um, as soon as we got to the airport, the warmth of the people that came and thanked us for coming and what we were sacrificing. And the door to the motel did not close with food and encouragement and welcoming. So of course, everyone likes to know that they make a difference. And that was very heartwarming and very encouraging and we loved it from the start. In 1968, Yeshiva purchased the Lake Apartment House at 1511 Perry Street. In 1971, Yeshiva Torah Chaim marked a milestone when it graduated its first class, consisting of eight students. Um, I came with uh, the Rosh Yeshiva Rabbi Yitzchak from Boston, where he was the Maggid Shir there, and we all enjoyed his Shir, so myself and two other Bachram, we signed up immediately when we heard that the Rosh Yeshiva was starting his own Yeshiva. Then we had a very good year and we steiged a lot. I was a learning rabbi in a camp, and uh, Erb Yitzchak came to visit the camp, and he made an, an unbelievable impression on me. When I told my father that I have an interest in going to Denver, he says, Asnish getroffen, Episwate, you couldn't find anything further? And I had the Zuchus of learning with one of the Rosh Hashivas early in the morning, uh, Rav Yitzchak Wasserman, and uh, we had a Chavusa, a very steady and ongoing uh, morning Chavusa, which I cherish very much. There was a certain pride that we were the first graduating class, even though I only joined the class for 12th grade. But it was a group of boys that really were, were friends with each other. And uh, one of the wonderful things was that very often when you deal with adolescence, the friendships are not so sincere, uh, not very genuine, and here I felt that people cared for each other. In 1981, Yeshiva marked another period of growth when it opened a kollel for higher learning for married students. In 1986, Yeshiva launched its division of community services, becoming the first Yeshiva in North America to hire a full-time outreach professional. Yeshiva's kollel member, Rabbi Yaakov Meyer, became its first director. Since then, he has become an integral and visible part of Denver's Jewish community as the rabbi of Aish Denver. The initiative of the yeshiva to do outreach in the community actually predated my arrival in Denver. Uh, the yeshiva was teaching classes in synagogues and other places. But in 1986, they asked if I would start a yeshiva without walls, sort of take the yeshiva and the Torah's teachings and the joy of Judaism out of the walls of the yeshiva. The yeshiva's outreach has impacted Southeast Denver, West Denver, East Denver, 
and at times even beyond the state of Colorado. In 1997, Yeshiva Torah Chaim moved into its current location, the former site of the Hebrew Educational Alliance. In 2002, the Jewish Experience, the Yeshiva's formal outreach arm, opened its doors in the Jewish Community Center and moved to its current location on Monaco in 2014. In 2011, the yeshiva underwent a significant reorganization to ensure its future viability. To aid the Rosh Yeshiva, Rabbi Aaron Yisro Wasserman assumed the position of President-CEO, and Rabbi Aaron Boruch Kagan assumed the position of Vice President and Director of Alumni Affairs. One of the tremendous pleasures that I have in uh, the daily grind, where things can sometimes get a little overwhelming, but one of the true joys and pleasures that I have is working so closely hand-in-hand -hand together with Urban Yisrael, who is completely dedicated 24-7 to thinking of what can help the yeshiva, how the yeshiva can gain, how we can benefit from any given situation, strategizing. I am forever grateful to my parents and to Yeshiva Rabbi Kagan and his Rebbe Tzinola Shalom, who were in, imbued in me the lessons, the lifelong lessons of Nesiras Nefesh, of what it means to build Torah, what it means to give over yourself to others. And this is something that I have learned from and continue to take with me every single day. And it inspires me as we carry on to serve the club. It was the summer of 89 and I was in uh, Camp Shifti Israel. And the yeshiva came to recruit, and I called my cousin from Eretz Israel. His name was Mike Maiman, was an old Denver guy. And uh, Mike said, if you can go to Denver and just learn from the yeshiva's midas, it's Kadai. I have tremendous memories of the yeshiva and the growth that I had in the yeshiva over there. For that, I have tremendous akar satay for the Rosh Hashivas and all the rabbeim. One of my, my fond memories of the yeshiva was definitely the Elzman. Uh, it was a very special time and it's something I, I remember to this day. When people say to me, why did you go to Denver? It's so far away. I came all the way from the East Coast. I grew up in Baltimore. Well, the yeshiva actually was willing to take me in and uh, they gave me a few chances. I graduated. I'm grateful to the yeshiva for that. Grateful to the Rosh Yeshiva for holding on to me. Denver Yeshiva also holds a special place in my heart because of my dear grandfather, Rav Shafta Likasil, Sheldon Baron, Zacharni Levracha, who founded the yeshiva and cared for it his whole life. My grandfather was always very proud of the yeshiva, for the yeshiva took Denver to an elevated place. It brought a higher level of learning and it elevated the whole kedusha of the city. In 2014, the vision of the yeshiva's founders bore fruition through the establishment of a legacy campaign with the goal of remodeling the school building and erecting a beautiful and functional dormitory. The completion of the dormitory building has provided new opportunities to enhance the yeshiva student experience. Together, Rabbi Kagan and Rabbi Wasserman have been developing, refining, and directing Yeshiva Torah Haim for the past 50 years. Through their Miseris Nefesh, dedication and concern, they have maintained their close friendship and partnership, and together they have made the yeshiva a bastion of Torah Judaism and a living reservoir of Jewish continuity. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the loving support of their devoted wives, Rebbitson Riva Wasserman and the late Rebbitson Leah Kagan of blessed memory. Both women offered their unwavering support and dedication and served as role models as the epitome of the Jewish Aishas Chayel. They indeed have been women of valor who on a daily basis demonstrated their concern and love for the students and all of their fellow Jews. Fifty years ago a seed was dedicatedly planted, tiny and hopeful to achieve the yet undone. That seed flourished into a blossoming tree of over 1,000 alumni and hundreds of Jewishly associated and educated families. A tree whose welcoming shade embraces those within and without.
a vibrant tree whose roots extend to lend sustainability to the entire Denver Jewish community. A tree of life to all who cling to it, support it, and bask in its protective shield. We welcome your support and invite you to celebrate with us as Yeshiva Torsheim moves into its next phase as the Denver's Jewish community Torah Legacy Builders. May we merit to bring Nachas to the Rashi Yeshiva and let us all together continue the legacy of building Torah in Denver and around the world.